I would like to give you really a brief overview about the project which is known for a few decades uh, and what we believe has great uh, size but also great potential. It's the Pantanas Porphyry Copper Molly project in the western uh, Cordillera of Colombia. First, a few words about the company. Minera Cobre de Colombia uh, is a private Canadian corporation uh, financed to date through private equity. Uh, MCC has about 2.7 million outstanding shares and the shares are tightly held by management and RCF as we've heard uh, this morning. The company controls a uh, prospective porphyry copper portfolio covering more uh, than 3,300 uh, square kilometers in 145 uh, different concessions over a strike length of more than 200 kilometers of the Eocene porphyry copper belt of Colombia's Western Cordillera. The main target at the moment is Pantanos. It's the most advanced project to date and the first target we like to drill. MCC has two other drill ready targets uh, and more than 80 uh, priority uh, identified targets for further follow up, uh, but this for later on. Just a few words about uh, the management. Uh, our executive chairman is Ian uh, Slater. He is co-founder and CEO of Red Eagle Mining. Uh, they acquired uh, Santa Rosa uh, Gold Prospect and put it then into production recently. Jeff Tui is the CEO of MCC. He has more than 35 years of experience in the mineral industry and more than 25 of them in South America. A few words to the history of the project. Uh, Pantanos uh, was discovered by a regional reconnaissance exploration program uh, which was uh, jointly undertaken between the UN and in Geominas in the 1970s and Pantanas actually was the first and most promising uh, porphyry copper target identified. Initial drilling carried out by Ingeominas in the 1970s and early 1980s targeted a large surface copper anomaly and resulted in significant uh, porphyry copper moly discovery. The concession contract then was awarded to Glencore by the Colombian government in 2007 and uh, this by a successful bidding process. MCC purchased the project from Glencore and JV partner Anglo Gold Ashanti and holds now 100% interest in it. MCC has successfully completed a uh, uh, consulta previa process with indigenous communities within the area of influence. There are no communities in the direct area of the property as such. Communities really have given us their full support in advancing the Pantanos through the next step of an initial uh, drilling program. Really our relationship with those communities at Pantanos has been very positive and has been cultivated with a lot of care and over years. It's not something that we started, it was started before by Glencore. We have completed and submitted a very comprehensive environmental study to support our first upcoming drilling campaign and we expect to get a final environmental permit by Q4 of this year. Here, just a, a brief location map of the, of the project. Where is the pointer? Oh, here we are. You see here uh, the Western Cordillera with the typical Mande baffleite and a regional fault, the Morindo fault, which goes through the property and where the fertile intrusive of the Pantanos project are directly associated. Pantanos is about 120 k's northwest of the, of the city of Medellin. Uh, closest town is Frontino. And uh, the concession as such spans up 2,800 hectares. It's one block. Here a close up of the property. The black outline is the property boundary. Uh, the tan colors uh, are, is the Mandi baffleite, and in rose, uh, red, and violet colors, you see the different fertile intrusives. The dashed uh, bolt line is, a, uh, is the Morindo fault, as you can see, really controlling an arc parallel running. The yellow dots are uh, historic uh, drill holes. As you can see, they're mostly tested only Pantanos West area. Uh, in 2016, MDRU completed a age dating program requested by uh, uh, Glencore and came up with an age for the Mandi Buffalite of about 47 million years, so Eocene of age, and uh, a range uh, of 41 to 46 million years by uranium lead for the different fertile intrusives. Rimi Mosmian dates show kind of a narrow window and uh, range between uh, 42.5 and 43.4 years. 
million years, sorry. Historic drilling here, a few words and a few uh, intercepts to show you what was done so far. So in Kiyomina's completed uh, 20 historic drill holes uh, in an area of about five by one kilometer, mostly testing Pantano's West area. Uh, uh, grades ranged up to 6% in copper. Uh, deepest hole only went down to 333 meters. Uh, shallow leach capping could be confirmed, uh, typically for this area. Uh, of this belt. There is hardly any leach capping. Primary hypogene uh, mineralization comes nearly up to surface or directly up to surface. Eight holes terminated in strong mineralization, namely hole 12, which intercepts about 270 meter with nearly a 0.7 copper and some moly in it. And hole 17 had an intercept of 42 uh, meters with nearly a 0.9 copper. Mineralization comprises quartz stockwarts and breccias with calcopyrite, bornite, mineralization in minor amount, calcosite, and pyrite and molybdenite. It's to mention that the entire area has a shallow level of erosion with respect to the potassic uh, alteration of the systems. Therefore, all the potassic score are preserved, and we see this in one of the next slides. Uh, hardly any potassic alteration is actually outcropping at surface. Here are a few pictures. Uh, Pantanos West outcrops. Uh, you see a very nice stockwork there with A and B veins, and even there at surface, they contain calcopyrite, boronite, and molybdenite uh, mineralization. At the right side, uh, you see a piece uh, of porphyry with calcopyrite pyrite veins and stringers. Uh, I checked the uh, rock chip database, as I just recently joined the company, and there were several samples. Primary mineralization with over 1% at surface, some even higher. Glencore completed a very nice uh, extensive IP survey on the property, uh, especially also on the western side, uh, where Pegador Cita and Pantanos centers are located, and you see the outcome was a very nice, large, three by one kilometer in size, chargeability, chargeability anomaly. Historic drilling, however, was really done at the flank and hardly drill tested it. So, uh, obviously very interesting in this respect. If you go, if you see here a black view through the 3D inversion model, uh, you see where the historic holes are lined up. It's like a finger there, and they really tested there the philic uh, alteration or of the Pantano star site porphyry. The rest, west of the Marino fold, is drill untested. They also completed, uh, with the help of the Servicio Geológico de Colombia uh, fluid inclusion studies on some samples from the historic drill core. And what I really like to show you here is again, potassic alteration is preserved. We have philic or propylitic mostly at surface. Uh, homogenization temperatures of the fluid inclusions are increased, so we get really increased temperatures with depth. Uh, all makes sense. And IR uh, spectroscopy done on surface sample, and more than 800 surface samples confirmed the same. So the higher we get the temperature, the better we get typically the grades and increasing calcopyrin polymerization at surface. Here again, uh, a close-up of, um, or not a close-up, but a geology map with the rock chip samples plotted on top of it, now with strontium yttrium ratios. Yesterday we heard in many talks about famous adakites and how they are uh, indicated uh, for fertile or ore-forming intrusives. Now here, really very nicely uh, visible is that the Mandeb batholite is very low in strontium yttrium, typically below 40, uh, whereas all the other breccias, dacite, uh, porphyries, or, and granodiorite intrusions, so all in this color, have very high other uh, signature, or very high other uh, uh, texture, meaning basically strontium medium ratios above 70, very often above 100. If we compare this with a uh, paper, Luke's uh, from 2014, and uh, he has a diagram here plotting all the major. Uh, uh, copper deposits, uh, you see that actually Pantanos uh, samples plot in at the very high end, uh, together with Los Pelambres samples, Chuki Kamada, Radomiro Tomic, and others. Uh, I state here, looks nearly all gold poor giant porphyry copper deposits like Chuki Kamada, Rio Blanco, Escondida, El Abra and El Salvador uh, plot at strontium medium ratios above 40, mostly above 70. This is exactly the case for Pantanos, and have SiO2 contents above 60 weight percent. Here a map, uh, a MAC, an airborne MAC map, we've reduced to pole MAC, and you see this very nice inverse correlation between the MAC 
and the fertile porphyries. Really, the MAC can be used as a regional uh, tool to map out those uh, different uh, younger fertile porphyries. And you see very well, I left here the points with strong symmetry in it, uh, representative for the different ethologies, and you see they go very well together. So uh, very good correlation here. Former work also includes uh, airborne radiometrics, and uh, I left here uh, the total count radiometrics in as the shows mostly or the best, uh, really, the, the philic alteration. It maps very well, actually, the philic alteration uh, there at Pantanos West. That's uh, in this area here. That's a drilled area, we know. But it also shows, obviously, new areas of interest which overlap with IP and geochem, as, as seen here at Pegadorcito, but also here at Pantano Central. So, Airborne survey really helps to identify also those different centers. The blue dots on the map that were the requested platforms uh, we sent into the authority, uh, these uh, to have ready for future drilling. Now here, a uh, soil grid map, and uh, really like to point out here also the intensities, and uh, what is basically Mangenta goes over a 0.1% copper in soil. That's a soil grid, uh, uh, really a very nice study with more than 1,400 samples. Uh, all multi-element, ICPMS, for acid digest, so very good for vectoring here. And you see we have at least four different large uh, uh, copper soil anomalies, Pegador Cito, Pantanos West, Pantano Central, and Chontaduro. Drill tested, basically only Pantanos West. And you see again, it's not very good visible here, again the controlling Morindo fold. If you look at Molly, Molly does not really make hallows, it really comes together with the copper, so clear uh, copper uh, Molly porphyry uh, signature, and uh, obviously helps also very much uh, to vector in the different centers. I took then uh, all the rock chip samples collected so far on the property, uh, plotted up uh, cocopyrite uh, over pyrite to kind of get a vectoring uh, tool to see further how, how things are going and where are the centers really uh, outcropping or closer to surface. And you see again, Pantanos uh, West sticks out there very nicely, but also Pegadorcito on a moderate level and broader level uh, uh, has higher cocopyrite pyrite ratio than the rest. And uh, Chont Chontadura has a few sniffs, still underexplored. And what really showed up here is kind of an arc and Morindo fold paralleled uh, signature. First, I thought that's really kind of an, an interpolation uh, issue. Uh, I then reduced, uh, restricted then the grading, and still, it's still there. So we have really to do for here follow-up work. We can't really explain this yet, uh, but it may be a structure where we, we get more cocopyrite in. Summarize, we can say uh, that uh, Pantano's property has so far uh, completed the set, the suite of different campaigns and studies and this includes uh, field mapping, structural interpretation. It includes also airborne magnetometry and airborne radiometrics. 3D IP survey, uh, a very nice soil sample grid, fluid inclusion studies, and IR spectroscopy. We really do have a multiple vectoring tools for exploring those porphyry systems. The intrusive suite correlates very well with RTP MacLow, as we saw. Radiometrics map out well, uh, philic alteration, uh, we identified multiple strong, very strong actually, copper moly anomalies. Uh, and we do have a very good correlation between the mineral at surface, so calcopyrite presence, and uh, uh, IR spectroscopy. So the vectoring, the temperature vectoring of this study really indicates directly also where we found the calcopyrite. And uh, really to mention here that uh, surface close prime uh, mineralization, hardly any leach capping. So there's an increased uplift there. We do not have enrichment. It's basically all hypogene mineralization and potassium score are preserved. Pantanas project is a multi-pulse system uh, of porphyries and breccias. Uh, all intrusive centers show a very strong adakitic uh, signature and are all eocene of age. So there's clear evidence that they have potential to be very fertile or forming magmas. The four so far identified mineralized centers are Pantanos West, Pecadorcito, Pantano Central, and Chontadura. And historic drilling showed, as you saw in the tables, really the potential and some very nice uh, significant copper moly intercepts. Deepest hole only went down to 330 meters. So we do see, obviously, uh, not only lateral, but also depth potential there. The three by one 
kilometer in size chargeability anomaly was hardly tested just at the edge. Uh, however, we do have surface geochem uh, anomalies and other multiple vectors which show that uh, potential mineralization continues onto the area where we have the chargeability anomaly. We get full support by communities. We do plan very uh, soon, hopefully, uh, to start with a five to 6,000 meter drilling uh, program, an initial drilling program. Uh, we expect uh, final permits uh, by Q4, so anytime soon. And uh, last but not least, I'd really like to mention, we do have in place a very nice professional team, uh, which uh, is very able and very capable to, to handle also the social, environmental, and uh, logistical aspects. So I'm truly looking forward. Uh, I hope it was interesting. Thank you very much for listening to this talk.